Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making a poseable beak. Basically, I want to make a beak that will open it and close and we can add to different types of bird or dragon art dolls. Now, if you didn't see my other tutorial where I made a poseable jaw with a bunch of teeth and stuff inside of it, I'll leave that link down below in the description so you can check it out. But basically, I want to do beaks because the way we're going to add them to the head is going to be a little bit different than if we were doing teeth. So I thought it would be just a fun variation of our previous project. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so if you saw my poseable jaw tutorial I recently did, the main difference that we're going to have to deal with with making a beak versus just making the teeth is we're going to have to make the outside of the beak as well for the molds. So first things first, I'm going to start by figuring out what the inside needs to be and then we'll work from there. So for this, I ended up rolling out a nice thin layer of clay and then I made a basic little pattern that I'm going to use to make the shape of the inside of the beak. So I'm just going to lay that out, trace around it, and cut my clay out from the sheet of clay that we made. I'm going to need one for the top and one for the bottom of the beak. So I have my pieces cut out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth the edges and just adjust the shape of them and then I need to decide which one is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. For the top I'm going to be removing some clay and then for the bottom I'm going to be adding clay. You want to make sure that these two pieces fit together kind of like a puzzle. So it's okay if it's a little larger right now. I'm going to bake everything and then we can sand and remove a little bit of extra clay to make sure everything fits nice and snug. So I'm going to bake my clay for about 20 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit and then once we take everything out of the oven we'll test the fit and adjust as we go. And then once you know your two pieces of clay fit nicely together, we can then start working on the outside of the beak. Now for my beak, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a shape similar to a raven's beak. So it's going to be kind of long and thick. And one thing that I want to do since we are going to be making molds out of this is I don't want to waste a ton of clay. So I'm going to take a lump of tin foil, I'm going to glue it to the top portion of the beak, and I'm going to use this that way I don't have to have the entire thing clay. So once I have my tin foil in place, I can then start covering it up and making the shape of the beak. So I'm just going to take some strips of clay, lay them out over the lump of tin foil, and start blending them together and trying to figure out how I want the shape to look. So I'm going to finish up the top of the beak first, figure out the basic shape of it, and then I'm going to move on to working on the bottom half. The bottom half of beaks tend to be a lot smaller than the top, so I'm not going to add any tin foil or anything. I'm just going to take a strip of clay, lay that out, and adjust the shape of it until I like how it looks. I'm also going to put the two pieces together while I'm sculpting them to make sure that they look nicely together. Once I'm happy with how the beak looks, I'm going to put both of the pieces in the oven for a final bake at 275 Fahrenheit for about 45 to 55 minutes. Once our clay is out of the oven and is cool to touch, we can then start figuring out how the two pieces are going to connect. So for our beak, I'm going to be connecting them in the same way that I connected our jaws in our previous tutorial. Basically, you're going to take the two halves of your beak and you're going to put them together and you're going to figure out where the spot is that they rest nicely together and you're going to kind of like adjust them as if they're being posed and figure out where that point is that doesn't move a lot and that's going to be where your joint is going to be. Now, if you're not wanting to make molds like I'm going to do with this piece, I recommend just drilling holes and using a wooden dowel to connect your two pieces together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill tiny little holes on one piece and then I'm going to add little bumps on the other piece. Then once we have the two pieces casted in resin, you'll just take them and snap them together. Okay, so you have a finished beak and now you need to add it to a face. So how are we going to do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with making a base to work on. I'm going to take a glass container with a lump of tin foil. I'm going to take my strips of clay and I'm going to get this completely covered in clay and blended together so I have a nice basic shape to start my clay head with. Now since our beak is based off of a raven's beak, I figured making a raven's head would be a good start for this project. 
So I'm gonna adjust the shape of our clay. I'm gonna get it kind of cleaned up into a rough idea of what my raven's head is going to be. And then I'm going to add the beak to the very front of our clay. So that's the main difference with adding the clay beak to a bird versus adding a poseable jaw. With the poseable jaw, we had to sculpt the top of the head on top of the jaw and the bottom of the head on the bottom portion and kind of have our resin piece in the middle. With this, it needs to be on the front of the face. So I'm gonna figure out where my beak is going to be placed on the front of the face. I'm going to add some clay around it and kind of just blend it together a little bit. Not too much because I don't want to cover the actual resin beak. I just want to make sure everything is connected nicely and has a nice smooth transition from one to the other. When I first did this I was messing around with adding a feathery texture to it but in the end I decided when I work on this project, I'll probably just fur the face to make it look like it has feathers versus having the feathers sculpted out of clay. Now I want you to notice that when I'm connecting the beak to the front of the face, the bottom half is not touching any of the clay. I'm just connecting the top of the beak to the face. In fact, right behind the bottom half of the beak, you'll wanna make sure there's a nice gap. That way you can have the beak actually open. So depending on how open you want your beak, you wanna make sure there's at least a nice gap to where it can open all that way. So just kind of, once you have it connected, test how far you can open your beak and make sure you're happy with that but again make sure you have a nice gap behind that piece so it can actually move other than that I'm just going to lay out the basic shape of our Raven's head I'm not gonna add much texture or anything at all I'm just gonna figure out where the eyes are gonna go and for this I'm going to be using some glass eyes that I figured would look really cool once I get to making this art doll so I'm just gonna finish up our face, make sure I like how everything looks, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And our head is pretty much all finished at this point. Okay guys, and here is our raven head that I decided to make with our poseable jaw. And as you can see, you have to kind of leave a spot of clay behind it so that it doesn't open too, too much. So that's a good way to control it so it doesn't like open all the way up like ah. <laughs> Anyways, this little guy eventually will be turned into an art doll. So if you guys have any suggestions for him, I haven't quite decided if he's a raven, a dragon, or whatnot. We'll figure it out eventually, but here's just something kind of cool I ended up making. Also, while I was making this, I decided to make a shorter poseable beak. So I got this little chubby thing right here. So I'm thinking this could be a really cool like griffin beak. So you might see this in the future as well. And if you guys wanna give this tutorial a try for yourself or you just wanna make an art doll in general, I have a bunch of art supplies linked down below in my description so you guys can check that out and see what I like to use to make my art dolls. Now these are affiliated links so they do help support the channel. Also, I have my Etsy shop linked along with my Redbubble which I've been trying to do a little bit more of but I've kind of abandoned it for a while but there's some interesting stuff there. Eventually we'll get into adding some more stuff on there. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!